Okay, Kevin. On our way out to the undisclosed location heading through Spokane right now. Uh, recently, one of your friends passed away. A uh, college teammate, right? Yeah. Uh, Corey. Corey Sonnen, correct? Yes. Correct. How old was Corey? Uh, I think Corey was 48. So he was a year ahead of you? Correct. One year in school. Is he yep. from Oregon? Where's he from? He's from Woodburn, Oregon. He's from Woodburn, Oregon. He was... Uh, and he's, he's a great wrestler, but he was, uh, you know, he's a three-sport athlete. He was the type of guy, he was like all-state football, um, you know, track, three-time high school state champion. Um, great, great competitor, just good athlete, not super big, but, you know, still all-state football, was, I think, a... Uh, 134 pounder when he started college and, and, and moved up to 142. He was a you know uh, Pac-10 champ. He was a runner up for Oregon. For Oregon. For Oregon. He was uh, I believe a uh, three-time NCAA qualifier. Uh, and he's a year ahead. He's a 90 grad. He's a 90 high school grad. Yeah. Okay. And then. What degree did he, do you know? What degree he got from Oregon? Um, I think he got a, uh, you know, I think he got some kind of uh, English or something. He was uh, like he was always he was a very well-read guy. But hanging out with him, he he just you know he was uh, you would just he's one of the guys like around the campfire and dinking around and dinking around. very well-read guy, smart guy would read like this Chaucer stuff, which I, I can't even. You know, I, I don't even know what language that is. Just smart, smart guy. Tremendous businessman um, after college. Family guy. Awesome family guy. Um, you know, married his, married his uh, sweetheart, uh, Margaret, and three kids. And uh, tremendous guy. One of those guys, I mean, everybody says, like, I mean, talk about a guy that was involved in his community and that... Um, you know, gave to his community, whether it's his time or, you know, where, what he was able to help, you know, financially. I mean, just. And relate, related to Chao, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cousin. Um, their dads are brothers. Yeah. Funny story. Their dads are brothers and their moms are sisters. No way. Yeah. So, so Rudy, big Rudy, because we called Corey. Rudy too. That was his middle name, but um, um, Rudy and Paulette married, and then uh, you know Chael's parents were Pat Sonnen and Claudia, and so you know they grew up around each other, but like a Up town or two Woodburn, over. Yeah, I was gonna say Woodburn's by West Lynn, right? The yeah, right, or Portland, both Portland, right? Yeah, I mean, Woodburn's about you know it's about twenty miles south. It's where the all the the big outlets are now, the mall, like the okay, big outlets. Yeah, I know what you're talking. Um, about Happy twenty Valley's miles. Happy Valley's right around there, I think. But yeah, you know, like out in the country, used to be all farm country and stuff, um, a lot of farming, and then you know, like the the mall, the outlet mall, kind of probably brought another over time, probably I don't know, fifteen, twenty thousand people there. Um, but yeah, man, hell of a teammate, great what, guy. What did he have? What What did he pass away from? So he had uh, he he had a brain tumor. Um, I don't know the. Apologize for not knowing the. Uh, you know the technical brain tumor, brain cancer, um, which he 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 had for. Almost two years. He battled it for two years? Yeah, damn near two years. Wow. I think it was fall of 18 when, uh, right around right around October, I think, um, when he was first diagnosed and, and went to the Mayo Clinic and, went, and, you know, I don't know all the medical terminology and stuff, but... Brain cancer. You know, so it supposedly cancer. had inoperable sort of brain cancer kind of thing, but, you know, I did, like... It had to be operable because there was there wasn't another choice if he wanted to stay around longer and and so 
you know, he, he battled it and he was, you know, he got pretty healthy for a while. I mean, all else considering, but you know, he lost one side of his body, um, the ability to use it a lot. Paralyzed um, him. Yeah. After the operation and just, uh, we were able to, we were able to go see him for a weekend, um, right about one month before before he passed. Where did they live? So they lived in uh, Gig Harbor, Washington, which is over on the peninsula, kind of across the across the sound from like Tacoma. Got it. Kind of um, over the peninsula, go over the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, go over there where Bremerton is, um, and, and there's Gig Harbor up there, and um, man, oh man. A bunch of us got to go see him. We we spent the whole weekend with him. Guys from Montana and living in Montana and Colorado and Oregon and Washington and Idaho and uh, about ten of us. How many times did you guys qualify for the NCAAs together? Twice? Uh, that would have been uh, three times. You guys were teammates at the NCAAs three times? Yeah. Wow. And you were 18 all those years and he was 34 and 42? Yeah. Yeah. What was his best finish? Do you remember? Well, he didn't place in the NCAs. No, what was his best finish? Three and two, two I, and skidoo. Man, I, I, I couldn't or you, tell you were lasered in on what K. Yeah, was doing. I, I, you know what? It's funny. You go to those towns and you go, I mean, I, you, you just, I don't really know. I mean, you have three wins. You have, you know, you're in the hotel, you're in the workout room, you're in the arena. Bit of a blur, would you say? Yeah, I mean, it's like some people remember more than I do as far as that. I can, I can remember the back area of the arenas and coming out onto the mats. And you're some, the first out of the shoot, though. So yeah. you would be getting done with the match, and he'd be warming up. Probably coming up. I, yeah. I don't know if I ever saw him wrestle, to be honest, That's at so the crazy. NCAs. I, like you know. It's kind of the same way coaching too. You see your guys wrestling the rest of the time you're in the back and you and you see very few guys from other team, very few matches that don't involve your athletes until it gets out probably to Saturday or something. You know? Yeah, like because you, then you it's got, more spread out. Yeah, you got a couple guys wrestling and you know and you're last guys. Yeah. As a teammate, what what's what's uh you know, something as a teammate, as a friend, what's a story you can recall about him that like kinda of stands out to you about Corey? Well, I mean, just the, the, man, there was so many good stories, but I mean, I can remember, um, he was a great teammate. I mean, just a great teammate. You know, when I got there, I was wet behind the ears. You know, I was probably like a lot of guys. I wasn't sure if I belong, you know, number one, I, I thought I did, or I hoped I did, but wasn't really sure, you know, win a state championship as a, as a senior and you know, now you're going where the big boys are. And he was the guy that pull you aside. You know, he just got the hell beat out of you for an hour by an older guy. And, you know, pull you in like, hey, you're going to be all right. You know, you just keep coming in here. Keep doing what you're doing. You're working your tail off, man. You're like, and just build you up. He was also like a guy that would just, much like Chael, you know, like give the shirt off, off their back for like a teammate or somebody that he cared about. And I think, you know, he did, I mean, obviously he never told me much, but what just other people told me is like in his community over the, so he moved to Washington soon after college and he had a couple businesses and, you know, just what people tell me. And, you know, I mean, tremendously impactful in his community. Like, and he was the, the best thing about Corey. Here's the best story. It's not really a story. The best thing about Corey was he was the guy that everybody wanted to be like, or like the coolest guy in the room, no matter what room. And I, I, I was talking to some of my buddies about this after, you know, after, after, after we lost him and like, Okay, Corey was a guy, everybody was trying to be cool. Everybody, you know, like a lot of guys were trying to be cool or whatever. Corey was just cool. He didn't, he, there was, there was, he didn't have to try to fit in. It didn't matter who he was hanging out with. 
he fit in. He was the guy. If you were at hanging out after practice in the sauna, the guy you wanted to talk to, the guy you wanted to listen to that make you laugh, the guy you wanted to hang out with on Memorial weekend around the campfire, like the guy you wanted to get over by. Uh, I mean, that's that guy. And he was just that guy, the like all American looks, build strong, you know, power clean, 270 pounds. Uh, just, he's that guy, like that guy was such a gift to, you know, the world. I mean, I got to wrestle with him for four years, but, um, he's the kind of guy you could call and, you know, so here he's an Oregon graduate and we're trying to, we want to take our guys, I think to the, uh, the world championships in, what was it? 2015 Vegas, in Vegas? Vegas, yeah. Yeah. You know, so we wanted to go to the 2015 World Championships, you know, get a bus, go down from Oregon, down to Vegas, um, take all the college guys, but it costs money. And call them up, and hey, this is what we're doing, like, hey, hey, how much is it gonna cost? What do you, hey, check the mail in two days. Boom. Help send 15, 16 kids down to the world championships. Not the school he was from, not his alma mater, but because we were teammates. And then, okay, so here's the other thing. You, they're five years apart, the cousins, right? Yeah, Corey yeah. and Chandler, they're five years apart. Yeah, so, so you were teammates with both of them, but they were never teammates. Correct. So like, so like Corey's brother, Corey had three brothers. Um, and he was the youngest. There was Sid and Lowell and uh, and Ty. And Ty and I used to work out sometimes in the summer. He was bigger. He was like 26, 34. Not, a, you know, not just a little bit bigger. And so he'd come up to Eugene. And in the summer, we would work out sometimes. He wrestled for Southern Oregon. And uh, actually, I believe, started out at Western Oregon. And that was kind of just when I was coming into college. And they lost their program, Western Oregon. So he went to Southern. He's a couple time All American NAIA. And so so Sid and Ty came up for the get together at Corey's. And, you know, Chris Jensen, who was a great teammate of mine, and I had to battle for a year for the spot. And he he, he was, you know, high school wrestling legend. Um, Washington lost one match in high school. Oh, went wow. to Notre Dame, came to Oregon when they dropped. That was a guy that made me a lot better, right? Because we had to battle it out. I mean, we had to battle it out. We would split time, like on a road trip sometimes. And then I got the spot my freshman year when he had a sh he, had, he hurt his shoulder. He went out for the year. Next year, we're wrestling different weights. He's around a 12 guy. Um, and so he was there and um, Scott Bizarre great friend of mine, Scott Norton, you know, a guy that I think was an NCAA semifinalist. I mean, just a bunch of really good guys, and uh, it was a special time. But yeah, to, I, I, I got off. The, Corey and, Corey and uh, Chael were never on the team together. Um, so yeah, they were, they, were, they were five years apart. But kind of like the same type of dudes, though, like guys who give you the shirt off their back, right? Oh, you can tell they're related, right? Oh, just, I mean, yeah, they were, they are close. They're double cousins, man. Double, you're right. Yeah. Double, double cousins. Double cousins. I mean, I, I know there's first cousins, there's second cousins. They're, they're like double cousins. They're, their dads are brothers. They grew up rodeoing together and, and, and their moms were sisters and, you know, I mean, tremendous family. What do you think the thing you're gonna miss the most about not having Corey around? I just, I mean, his wit. I mean, like, so for me, it's right. I can't put myself in. I can't put myself in the spot of Margaret and the three kids. I mean, the oldest just graduated high school, right? He's got. Oh he's still. He's got a sophomore to be and. 
I think an eighth grader to be or ninth grader. And so I can't put myself in that spot. I can't put myself in Ty's spot. I can't put myself in, you know, Paulette's spot, mom. Um, so, but for me, just, he's the kind of guy, he's the kind of guy that just, he make you laugh, sometimes fully making fun of you or himself, sometimes very dry humor. Sometimes, man, he could deadpan stuff. He deadpan and like you, you thought he was serious. He's telling you the truth, but he wasn't. It was like a giant lie. Um, but the energy he had, it was like, man, we went to Japan. Like we went to Japan and we're there and we're there two weeks and like, like he's the dude you want to try to get by in the bus when you're going from one town to the other and you're going to wrestle another team or you're deep sea fishing. Like that's the guy you want to try to get your rod set up and be over on the side of the boat by him. Because he just, the whole, thing, you know, the, the, the whole thing. It's the whole charisma. Charisma, personality, leadership. But also the guy that could be the funniest guy and the biggest screw off at the right time when it was time to do that. You got anything else for me? Tremendous human being.